Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Kristen Seaman, AORN's Clinical Perioperative Nurse Research Librarian. I will be moderating tonight's presentation, Surgical Team Delivering Negative Pressure Wound Therapy from OR to Home. You will hear from two speakers. First, Mary Alice Anderson, who is a perioperative practice specialist with AORN, where she serves as the lead author for the AORN Guideline for Pneumatic Tourniquet Safety and serves as a staff liaison to the AORN Nursing Research Committee. Mary Alice is a certified CNOR and has worked in a variety of perioperative settings, roles, and shifts, and is a proud member of Phi Kappa Phi, Sigma Theta Tau, and AORN. Mary Alice is currently pursuing a Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing Science at the University of Texas at Tyler regarding factors that affect perioperative nurse attrition. Next, we'll hear from Paige Comer, joining us as a presenter for Medela. She has 35 years experience as an RN. In 1984, she began her journey as a nurse and obtained a diploma of professional nursing. She became a certified operating room nurse in 1989 and a certified post anesthesia nurse in 1992. In 1994, she graduated with a BSN from Radford University. By 2016, Paige had become a certified wound specialist. She has more than 15 years in the operating room which includes the post-anesthesia care unit. Paige has also spent 10 years in home health nursing, including hospice. She's been a staff RN, as well as clinical management positions and marketing. Paige has spent more than 10 years in the industry, representative negative pressure wound therapy, pharmaceuticals, and gynecological instrumentation for the OR. Everyone's microphones are muted, but please submit your questions throughout the presentation in the chat box at the bottom of the page. At the end of the presentation, we'll open it up for Q&A. All right, Mary Alice, take it away. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Kristen. And thank you to everyone who was involved in making the switch to an amazing virtual conference this year. And thank you to our vendor partners who made it possible for me to speak with you today. My name is Mary Alice Anderson, and I am a perioperative practice specialist at AORN. I review research to update our clinical guidelines, facilitate the work of the research committee, and contribute to the clinical issues column of the AORN journal. If you've ever called the AORN nurse consult line, we may have already discussed your perioperative concerns, and I invite you to join me in exploring the exciting educational offerings and events during this new amazing virtual expo. Today, I'd like to discuss surgical wound healing and the perioperative nurse's role in creating optimal healing environments for our patients. One of the primary goals of the perioperative team is to prevent surgical site infections in our patients, which is facilitated by implementing evidence-based nursing practices, improved procedures, and advancements in technology. However, surgical site infection rates have remained steady from 2015 to 2018, and one in every 31 patients were diagnosed with a surgical site infection every day in 2015. In order to make surgery safer and more efficient for everyone, perioperative nurses should review the wound healing process and ways to protect our patients' wounds through sterile technique, as well as connecting with our industry partners to harness new interventions to provide the best perioperative nursing care. Following the recommended practices for sterile technique throughout the operative or invasive procedure is vital to prevent contamination of healthy tissue and the sterile field, as well as preventing personnel exposure when using intraoperative debridement devices with irrigation and promoting postoperative healing. AORN recommends preparing a sterile field for each patient and keeping different supplies and instrumentation separate for wounds of different classification levels, such as clean and contaminated. Additionally, there is a new recommendation to cover part of or the entire sterile table when they're not in use, such as a table set up for wound closure that may occur later during the procedure. Covering the sterile field or part of the sterile field is also important if the table may become contaminated before surgical wound closure begins. 
Cover tables do not need to be monitored directly. However, there should be a standardized procedure developed and agreed upon by an interdisciplinary team, including the circumstances and length of time to cover the sterile field, and how the sterile field will be protected, either by posting a sign, limiting traffic, or directly observing the covered sterile field. Please see the guideline for sterile technique to learn more about these recommended practices. Surgical wounds have been around since, well, <laughs> surgery. I'll review some important concepts regarding surgical wound healing and different methods for wound closure to facilitate the best evidence-based nursing care for the perioperative patient. So let's dig in. Wound healing is pretty complex, and the wound healing process doesn't always happen in order or all at once as different phases can occur side by side in the same wound. Interoperatively, we can help facilitate wound healing for our perioperative patients through one operation or series of operations in order to achieve the best surgical outcomes. There are four main phases of wound healing, including the hemostasis phase, where the body forms a clot to prevent additional bleeding. We can aid the body's platelet activation and aggregation with hemostatic agents and techniques interoperatively, such as topical medication, electrocautery, or mechanical method. Then inflammation occurs, where the wound bed is prepared for new tissue either by bodily functions or surgically removing the debris. The patient's surgical wounds typically present with edema, erythema, heat, and pain. During proliferation, the body will cover the wound with a scab. When there is a larger wound, different implants or autologous tissue grafts may be required to fill larger spaces. Finally, during the last phase of wound healing, aptly named remodeling, the tissue matures and granulation tissue facilitates the growth of new connective tissue, blood vessels, and epithelium to look like new. All surgical incisions have some form of closing the layer of epithelium as a final stage of wound closure to assist with these processes. Clearly, any break in sterile technique could have negative implications to wound healing at any phase. Therefore, it is critically important to protect the surgical incision site, not only during the procedure, but also during the weeks and months as wound healing occurs. Surgical wound healing begins with wound closure, and there are three main methods of surgical wound closure, primary, secondary, and delayed. Primary closure occurs for operative procedures without complications when healing can begin immediately. The reasons for utilizing another method include infection, trauma, or an extensive depth of the wound when wound healing will require more time than normal. Secondary wound closure is when the outermost layer of the surgical wound is purposely not closed to facilitate healing, starting with the innermost layer towards the outermost layer. This technique for surgical wound closure may prevent formation of pockets and deep wound layers that can cause complications such as abscesses. The wound may be allowed, allowed to heal on its own without further surgical intervention, or the patient may return for revisions or delayed primary closure. Delayed closure occurs when no letters of the wound can be closed during the initial surgery, and packing may be used to protect exposed organs and tissues as the wound is left open for an extended period of time. The patient then returns to the OR later to remove the protection and proceed with wound closure at the appropriate time. There are different ways in which to facilitate wound closure. Many of us think of suture first because suturing is one of the most common methods to close surgical wounds. Running suture may be used for primary closure when patients are not at risk for returning to the OR related to infection or any other complications, such as a clean same-day procedure. These sutures typically absorb into the tissue after an appropriate time that tissue healing has passed and may be braided to increase the strength of the thread. However, braided suture increases the risk for harboring microorganisms, and when there is an infection or an increased risk of developing an infection in a surgical wound, monofilament suture is preferred. Interrupted suturing may be used in the presence of a surgical wound infection or when a potential increase of pressure in the surgical wound site may occur such as using a non-removable splint over extremity wounds. Typically, this suture is stronger and does not absorb into this tissue and requires removal in an additional procedure or post-operative clinic visit. However, the AORN guideline for sharp safety recommends using alternative closure techniques when feasible to prevent sharp injuries related to suturing in the OR. This recommendation is based on high-level evidence that found no difference in outcomes with higher patient satisfaction and lower costs when using alternative surgical wound closure methods. 
New technologies are coming out every day, including staples, adhesive skin glue, and adhesive strips. And their use depends on what level of wound healing is expected after an operative or invasive procedure. Another adjunct to surgical wound closure is the use of negative pressure wound therapy dressings. This technology is not new. We've all seen the typical wound vac used to protect the abdominal cavity or deep wound. But negative pressure wound therapy has evolved and may also be used to bolster a primary closed wound, such as protection from potential wound dehiscence and may potentially reduce costs, especially when negative pressure wound therapy is used to facilitate surgical wound healing. Now that the patients are discharged home faster, then wound healing may even occur. Negative pressure wound therapy provides four functions to wound healing, macro and micro deformation, fluid removal, and an alteration of the wound healing environment, namely maintaining a serum moist environment for healing under the negative pressure wound dressing. Suction causes the collapse of the foam between the wound edges and undulation of the wound surface under the foam. In addition, negative pressure wound therapy removes fluid that accumulates as edema or in the extracellular space of the wound, which can compress tissue and inhibit healing. Also, negative pressure wound therapy can mechanically stabilize open acute wounds and support healing by stabilizing open abdominal incisions, minimizing wound sizes, and supporting the closure of abdominal walls. Negative pressure wound therapy can oppose the destructive forces that keep wound edges separate. Perioperative nurses should be aware of industry improvements and the multiple innovations regarding this technology and practices in order to assist the OR team with the successful application and use of negative pressure wound therapy to promote healing and decrease costs for our surgical patients. Innovations such as increasing the life of the pump and dressing material, as well as facilitating pressure management through frequent at the source pressure checks can assist with preventing issues before they come up and potentially reducing surgical site infections and the consequences. Thank you so much for your attention during this presentation on surgical wound healing. I hope that review was informative and you're excited to go out and explore new technological advances that can enhance how we do things to promote better patient outcomes and safe practices. I'm sure there are many new alternatives popping up every day that can be found in the virtual exhibit floor. Definitely take time to speak with our industry partners through this virtual expo to learn more about how alternative methods for surgical wound closure can best facilitate wound healing in your patient population. Here are some references, and now I'd like to introduce Medela to review how their products and services can help us enhance surgical wound healing. Thank you for sharing with us today. Here's Paige Comer, Clinical Sales Specialist and Certified Wound Specialist Nurse. Hello everyone, my name is Paige Comer and I am a Regional Clinical Specialist for Medela and Negative Pressure Wound Therapy. Welcome to Medela's presentation of Negative Pressure Wound Therapy's role in eliminating surgical site infection. In this presentation, we are going to look at Negative Pressure Wound Therapy's role in eliminating surgical site infection. I would like to review the role of the skin initially so we can further understand the mechanisms of action of negative pressure wound therapy for surgical site infections. The skin provides vital protection for our body. First, it is a protective barrier that helps maintain fluid balance by keeping moisture in and preventing invasion by bacteria that may be present on the skin. The epidermis acts as the body's major barrier against microorganisms and this is where resident and transient flora reside. Resident flora are the uh, colonizing flora that are considered to be permanent part of an individual's own ecology. Transient flora may be present on the skin but are not consistently present. Transient organisms have been called hitchhikers because they can be readily transformed from the skin to other surfaces or people. Hand washing and bathing remove transient organisms. Skin antisepsis impacts resident flora. Even though you clean the skin as best you can, there is still an opportunity for an infection. This picture depicts a sternal wound as a result of a surgical infection. With every infection, we have to stop and consider what could we have done to prevent this from happening and what we need to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. If the barrier, which is the skin, is compromised, that allows organisms to enter into tissues where they are not normally present and may result in the de development of an infection. The literature involving discussion of surgical site infection 
will often classify the type of surgical procedure. These classifications are clean, clean contaminated, contaminated and dirty or infected. There are very specific definitions for wound classes and most literature will only look at clean and clean contaminated surgical sites as those that are not expected to develop a SSI, whereas contaminated and or dirty or infected wound classes have a greater likelihood. If we look at the prevalence of infections, urinary tract occurs most often followed by surgical site, bloodstream, then other infections associated with healthcare. The issues of hospital acquired infections are probably already being dealt with by your organization. According to Clevens, hospital acquired infections manifest mostly as urinary tract infections, surgical site infections, primary bloodstream infections, and pneumonia, with the remaining infections falling under other categories. SSI is number two in infections, is number two in, in prevalence of HAI. It is one-fifth or 20% of HAIs are surgical site infections. Surgical site infections not only have an impact on patient health, but it impacts the economic health of healthcare institutions. Let's look at the economic impact of SSI. The CDC began to get the specifics of the patient impacts of SSI in 2009. The Scott Report, which is available online for free, determined that 290,000 patients were affected. In 2014, Dr. Anderson published an update for the Society of Healthcare Epidemiology of America, Infectious Diseases Society of America, stating that SSI is the most costly and common HAI. The CDC determined the cost of SSI was $25,546 per occurrence. If we multiply that by 290,000 patients, the end result is about 7.4 billion. That is a very sizable problem. So let's see what kind of patients are affected. When looking at this selection of high volume risk procedures, women are at risk if they have open hysterectomies or moms that deliver via C-section. All patients that need hip and knee replacement Spine procedures together with cardiac surgery are also at risk. Let's imagine you're a new mother having to manage a post C-section wound dehiscence. This makes reducing SSI personal for me. Now let's take a look at how the USA has been doing with SSI rates in recent history. The CDC compared baseline rates of SSI to the published SSI rates in 2015. In 2015, they found that just as many states did better than baseline as did worse than baseline of these two procedures. Overall, there was no significant change in SSI related to the 10 select procedures tracked in the report between 2017 and 2018. The 10 select procedures are surgical care improvement project procedures. You may see a list of these at the um, site listed below. So what can be done to continue to help reduce SSI? Let's take a look at negative pressure wound therapy when applied to closed surgical incisions. NPWT has been shown to be effective at reducing the risk of SSI. Let's briefly discuss the mechanisms of action that NPWT provides to closed surgical incisions. It increases blood flow, it decreases lateral and shear stress at the suture lines with decreased risk of wound dehiscence by actually holding the wound edges together. It removes fluids from deep in the tissues to help reduce formation of a hematoma or seroma while simultaneously holding these deeper tissues together. The remainder of this session is to provide training for the Medela Negative Pressure Wound Therapy System and Key Principles of Operation. Let's talk about how Medela NPWT fits the need for the application of NPWT for CSI, which is a closed surgical incision management. Let's begin with negative pressure wound therapy from Medela, which is depicted on the left side of the screen. Medela's NVMotion Motion delivers therapy confidence with double lumen tube and design from the pump to the wound to actively control the set pressure at the wound site. Small blockages in the tubing are resolved by the pump with assurance that the clinician and patients will see and hear notifications for any unresolved blockages. Now, let's look at negative pressure wound therapy systems with single lumen tubing. 
A single lumen does not manage pressure at the wound. There are no limited, there are no or limited blockage control. Canister, canisters are typically not standard. The dressing manages the fluid and you have a lure lock style tubing connection. The Medela negative pressure wound therapy system connects the wound dressing to the pump with the Envia fit pad. The fit pad features double lumen tubing, which facilitates the pump's ability to provide intelligent pressure control with dynamic exudate removal to help ensure NPWT is reliably delivered and controlled at the wound site. The opening at the bottom of the fit pad is where the double lumen tubing communicates to control and manage pressure at the wound site. Let's take a look at this innovation. Medela Healthcare Negative Pressure Wound Therapy, Intelligent Pressure Control, and dynamic exudate removal. The Medela Envia NPWT system features intelligent pressure control with dynamic exudate removal to help ensure NPWT is reliably delivered and maintained at the wound site. International guidelines for NPWT indicate that an electronically controlled feedback system maintains the selected pressure while enhancing patient safety. Medela's intelligent pressure control meets this standard by maintaining set pressure regardless of the pump's location, above or below the wound. Dynamic exudate removal actively adapts airflow cycles to changing wound conditions up to 20 times in five minutes when exudate volume or viscosity is high. The pump actively responds to medium exudate volume or viscosity with airflow cycles that range to five times in five minutes and to a minimum airflow cycle frequency of once in five minutes for a low exudate volume or viscosity. Medela Envia's intelligent pressure control with dynamic exudate removal delivers controlled and reliable NPWT at the wound site, innovating on the standard of care by actively adapting to changing wound conditions. Medela. We make negative pressure wound therapy easier. Medela has two systems, the first being the Envia Liberty. The Envia Liberty was designed for therapy confidence made simple. In connection with the Envia dressings, with fit pad, the fit pad we just reviewed, the Envia Liberty innovates on the standard of care with intelligent pressure control and dynamic exudate removal. At only 2.2 pounds and with a 14 hour battery life, the Envia Liberty promotes patient mobility in a hospital grade device while offering vacuum pressures of minus 40 to minus 200 millimeters of mercury. The Envia Liberty also has constant and intermittent therapy modes. The Liberty offers an airflow rate for vacuum creation of five liters per minute and has an air leak indicator on screen to visualize the vacuum status, which <clears throat> the Envia Liberty has 300 and 800 cc canisters available and offers a wide range of audible and visual alarms, including, but not limited to, air leak, blockage, battery low, and canister full. Additional alarms can be found in the instructions for use that comes with the pump. The Envia Motion was designed for personal pump convenience with reusable pump performance. The Envia Motion innovates on the standard of care with intelligent pressure control and dynamic exudate removal in conjunction with the Envia dressings with fit pad that we reviewed. The Envia Motion Endure and the Envia Motion 60 Day. The Envia Motion promotes patient mobility and weighs less than one pound while providing a 10 hour battery life. The preset pressures for the Envia Liberty are available at minus 40 to minus 175. The Envia Motion is a personal pump that offers constant and intermittent modes providing the, the performance of a reusable pump. The Envia Motion offers an airflow rate for vacuum creation of one liter per minute and provides a visual air leak alarm if the pump is unable to compensate for any leaks in the system. It is important to note that the Envia Motion is contraindicated for any wound which, which are larger than one liter in volume. This means that it may take a few seconds longer for the dressing to suck down than the, than the Envia Liberty. The Motion has a 150 milliliter canister with integrated double lumen tubing that connects the fit pad dressings through the quick connector and offers a wide range of audible and visual alarms, including but not limited to air leak, blockage, battery low, and canister full. 
Additional alarms can be found in the instructions for use that come with the pump. Medela has a full range of dressing options that fit with all of our pumps. Medela NPWT MB dressings are designed to provide therapy confidence with ease. As we have learned, the MB dressings innovate on the standard of care with intelligent pressure control and dynamic exudate removal. Medela offers three groups of dressings for NPWT to support clinician preference across the continuum of care, including foam dressing kits, gauze dressing kits, and specialty dressings, including white foam and a silver contact layer. Next, we're gonna look at the application of closed surgical incision management. We are going to protect the peri wound skin by window, window painting with the included film in the dressing. We are going to cover the incision side with a contact layer or silver lawn. Next, we are going to cut and apply the foam over the contact layer. We are going to cover with the included film and cut a hole one centimeter to coordinate with the fit pad. The next thing we're going to do is apply the fit pad over the one centimeter hole. Adela provides digital and live person-to-person -person support. Quick cards are available for both Medela and PWT pumps in English as well as Spanish. Medela provides an app for Apple or Android smartphones. The information is downloaded directly to reside on the phone so that the information can be accessed without a connection so the information is always available. QR codes are provided on both pumps that take the user directly to the user support. The QR codes are located on the sides of the pumps. There is a 24-7 support line by calling 1-877-735-1626. The Medela Continuum team consists of key account managers and clinical specialists that provide personal support as well. Thank you for attending this session. At Medela, we make negative pressure wound therapy easier. Thank you both. That was very informative. At this time, we'll take questions for both Mary Alice and Paige. You can continue to enter your questions in the chat box at the bottom of the screen. First, it looks like we have a question for Paige. Question is, how often does the dressing need to be changed for Medela NPWT used on a closed surgical incision? The dressing should be changed every seven to 10 days or uh, as the provider um, decides up to 15 days or 14 days with our um, motion pump or typically every uh, 48 to 72 hours as standard dressing changes. Okay, thank you, Paige. Um, next question uh, for Mary Alice. Is the NPWT dressing foam counted? Thank you for that question, Tristan. So retained surgical items are detrimental to patients' emotions, healthcare workers' time, and healthcare costs. The AORN guideline for retained surgical items recommends performing counts to reduce the risk of retained surgical items. Because counts are used during one operation, an interdisciplinary team may decide that dressing foam may not need to be counted, but that the pieces should be documented in the nurse's notes to be reviewed by the next clinician prior to the removal of the wound back to facilitate accountability to each piece's removal. Okay, thank you. And it looks like we have time for one last question. Um, looks like this would be for Paige. Um, can the Medela NPWT be applied to skin grafts? Yes, it can. You need to place a contact layer between the skin graft and the foam application and then place it to your pump and leave it on per, um, per practitioner preference or up to 14 days with our Liberty Motion, with our uh, Envia Motion pump. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, um, checking the time. Uh, I think we might be able to squeeze in one more question. Um, this again for you, Paige. Uh, what should be done if bright red fluid starts filling up the canister? you need to turn off the machine and call the provider immediately. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. Looks like we're out of time. Thank you again both. 
and our recording of this session will be placed in the product showcase in the virtual expo hall. Thank you so much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your evening.